in those famous words of Freddie Mercury, don't stop me now, I'm having a ball. This is the Animation Podcast on Good Friday, and not only good because I'm here, but it's good that there's going to be a second Kinero Mosaic anime TV series. That is wonderful news for fans, which includes me, and hopefully probably many of you. The series uh, aired last year and did stream on Crunchyroll. It's an adaptation of um, Yui Hara's four-panel manga, which is about a essentially a British junior high school girl. Are they high school? Actually, they might be early high school girls. A British girl that comes to Japan to be a exchange student, and who ends up living with her Japanese friend, who is obsessed with British culture. So, people compare the show Kenyuro Mosaic to A Channel. A Channel is available on domestic DVD from Sentai Filmworks. Kenyuro Mosaic arguably is not quite as charming or witty as A Channel, but it's very, very close. So, <clears throat> so those of you that like A Channel will probably very much also like Kenyuro Mosaic. And considering that it was a relatively popular show in Japan, it's going to be getting a second TV series, although we don't know yet when exactly. But, for fans, that's certainly something to look forward to. Oregairu is also getting a second season. This is the show known in America as My Youth Romantic Comedy Snafu, or known in Japan as... Yahari Ore no Seishun Love Come Wa Machigate Eru or My Youth Romantic Comedy is Wrong as Expected. This is the show, also from last year, about a high school boy who is pretty cynical about romantic relationships and friendships, so he ends up not having any friends until his homeroom teacher assigns him to be a part of a two-member school club, along with one of the most popular girls in school, who happens to not like him. Well, naturally, a sort of camaraderie, if not romance, ends up developing as the young boy starts to get over his um, cynicism. The show was a moderate success in Japan, obviously enough show that it will be getting a second TV series. The show streamed on Crunchyroll. If I am not mistaken, it has been licensed for American release, but not released yet. The Anti-Magic Academy novel series by, let's see, Toki Yanagami will be getting an anime adaptation. Karukawa publishes the Anti-Magic Academy 35th Test Platoon light novel series, or Tai Mago Gakuen um, 35 Shiken, Shiken Shotai. I apologize for not pronouncing 35 in Japanese. It's been a long time since I took formal Japanese, so off the top of my head, my numbers aren't very good. But the novel series by Toki Yanagami is set in a future alternate sort of world in which it's an end of an era. The era of magic and magical soldiers is coming to an end as firearms come in to replace them. So the story revolves around a student at a magic academy who is training to, be, to hunt down the remaining magic users. However, this particular student ends up getting sort of um, regarded, regulated down to one of the uh, remedial classes, the 35th Squadron, because he's not any good at using firearms. He still uses a sword. Into this class, oddly, ends up being assigned one of the experts, a girl who is an expert marksman. Now, if this sounds vaguely similar to Baka Test, you probably shouldn't be surprised, because as we know, a lot of Japanese light novels tend to borrow concepts from each other. While this probably won't be as slapstick, humorous comedy as Baka Test, it does have some narrative parallels to it, but certainly could end up being an interesting concept. Um, the idea of firearms against magic could be pretty interesting. The original light novel series premiered last, or sorry, two years ago in 2012, and it currently has nine light novels to adapt into anime. 
According to Amazon Japan, Ayumi Komura's Usotsuki Lily Shoga Shoujo manga series is going to be getting an anime TV series. Suisha, however, has not yet confirmed this. But for news like this to come out from a major retailer, presumably it had to come from some relatively official source, so we can assume that this is probably going to be formally announced before too much longer. The original manga series premiered in 2009, currently has 24 volumes, with the 25th collected volume, manga volume, due out in Japanese bookstores on the 25th, coincidentally, of this month. The manga series revolves around a high school girl who gets her first boyfriend. How <coughs> However, the unique comical aspect of this is that her first boyfriend, very handsome, very attractive young man, happens to actually hate the male species, so he prefers cross-dressing as a beautiful girl. So our high school girl gets her first boyfriend, except he looks and dresses like a girl. Well, obviously, there's plenty of potential for uh, comic um, relationship problems to arise from this, thus 25 ongoing volumes of manga. On the domestic front, it's a new season, so naturally it's around about time for Sentai to start announcing its first acquisitions of the season, and they've done so by picking up this season's Kamigami no Asobi and Mangaka to Assistant to. They've supplemented that with an acquisition of last year's shoujo school comedy Love Lab. Love Lab actually is the superior of these acquisitions, Kamigami no Asobi, which started last week, is the reverse harem show about a human girl swifted off to an alternate mysterious world by the god Zeus to teach a variety of handsome gods how to love. I watched the first episode of the show, thought that the production values were pretty good, the narrative very conventional, but the show definitely not for me, because I'm a god, not a girl. Assist Mangaka to Assistant Tall, or the manga creator and his assistant, honestly disappointing me a little bit. Typically, I like shows about the manga and anime creation industry. However, I was disappointed to find that the first episode of this particular show really revolved almost entirely about kind of lame sexual innuendo gags instead of actually making manga. Now, it may be that the series develops or changes direction, but the first episode really just didn't encourage me to watch any more of it. So, while it is a good acquisition for Sentai, because it's a brand new title, it's not actually a very strong title itself, in my opinion. There has been some speculation in the fan community that Love Lab would be a natural pickup by Discotech, considering that Discotech has picked up uh, um, Love Calm. Love Lab is a sort of similar shoujo school romance anime. Those of you that happen to enjoy Love Lab will probably also enjoy... I'm sorry. Those of you that love Love Calm will probably likewise enjoy Love Lab. Love Lab, for those of you that are not familiar with it, is a schoolgirl story about a girl who lies about being an expert in affairs and romantic relationships, and ends up sort of digging herself farther and farther into that lie by being dragged into being a, rom a romance consultant for her high school classmates. The show is quite witty, pretty funny, has nice character relationships, very broad spectrum of interesting character personalities. It was actually a pretty good show. So, this actually is a much stronger title than either Kamigami no Asobi or Manga Creator and his assistants. But considering that Sentai Filmworks has now announced only two out of roughly 60 new shows this season, I think we can probably anticipate more acquisitions from Sentai in the coming weeks. But, that of course remains to be seen. Sentai Filmworks this week Happened to bring us some new titles. This week, Sentai Film, which released the first half 
of the Shin Sekai Yori television series. That's from the New World. In your choice of either DVD or Blu-ray, Viz this week released the third of the Berserk Golden Age feature films, this movie, Advent, available on DVD or Blu-ray. I have not confirmed yet myself, but hopefully, presumably, this will be the uncut Japanese home video version. That is not an absolute certainty. After all, the recent release of the second season of Nira, Rise of the Yokai Clan, ended up being the, the censored broadcast version. So, hopefully, we will be getting the uncut version of the Berserk third movie, although the difference between the uncut and censored versions is very, very minor. The third movie, quite, quite graphic. Nippongichi Software America this past week released the first season of Zebex, Nyaroko san, Crawling Chaos, or as it's known from Nisa, Nyaroko Crawling with Love. This is the Hiore Nyaroko san television series. Strictly speaking, the third Nyaroko television series, but the first traditionally animated and big cult hit franchise series. Even limited edition Blu ray. Funimation released its ninth DVD collection of One Piece, which I believe is a priced down reissue of discs already released, but again, I haven't actually gotten around to confirming that yet, so forgive me for that. And then, in a bit of a surprise, Cinedime released its 11 disc Saint Seiya collection, the Sanctuary chapter, which strictly speaking is not the complete Sanctuary chapter, but it's called the Sanctuary chapter in a subtitled only DVD release. These are actually 11 of the discs previously distributed by, by AD Vision, but one would expect that Semigon would have released the English dubbed version, or would possibly release a bilingual version, but actually the Saint Seiya double case 11 disc set is subtitled only. So, for those of you that are interested in classic Saint Seiya, that have not gone out and tracked down the now out of print A Division discs, you can now easily pick up the brand new re release from Senegal and the Anime Nation. Uh, among these new releases, recommendations, Hayori Nyaroko san is not personally my favorite Nyaroko san anime. I remember reading HP Lovecraft almost in his entirety. Um, on a side note, H.P. Lovecraft's poetry was horrendously awful, so I never read very much of his poetry, but I did read all of his short stories. I mean, all of his short stories when I was in high school many, many moons ago. So I am actually much more partial to the original, first two Flash animated Nyaroko san anime series, which are much more faithful to the original books, which are much more faithful in parody to the original Lovecraft short stories. The Zebet produced Hayori Nyaroko san is very, very loosely based on the original Nyaroko san novels, but is much more mainstream and much more accessible. So it did become the most popular of the seasons, and while it's not my favorite series, I did still purchase it. I have not yet purchased the third Berserk movie. That's my own fault. I have picked up the first one. I'm a little behind. I still have not picked up the second one yet. But I will be picking up those. I still prefer the original manga. I still prefer the TV series, even with its technical weaknesses. Namely, its limited animation quality. I think that the second Berserk movie is the weakest, the third movie, a, a good comeback, but because they are so, so heavily condensed, I find the Berserk movies a compromised experience compared to the manga or the original TV series. However, considering that the third movie does feature animation of what the original TV series did not animate, I do recommend the new Berserk Golden Arc Trilogy. 
Saint Seiya. A little long time moderate fan, since I already own the original AD Vision discs, there's no need for me to buy these. But as I've said, if you're interested in Saint Seiya, this is a convenient way to pick up and catch up on, for example, the recently edited Saint Seiya Omega television series. I've been trying my hardest lately to catch up on all of the brand new anime from this season, which has been quite a chore, which I anticipate many of you realize. There have been roughly 60 new anime TV series premiering so far this month, and I am fortunate and crazy enough to admit that I've actually watched all but two of them so far which means that I've actually watched roughly 70 or 75 anime episodes in the past two weeks. That's the equivalent of watching roughly three entire TV series in the past week or two. For me, that's quite an accomplishment. I have not watched any of the brand new History Strongest Disciple Kenichi te television series. However, it is actually just a TV broadcast of the OAD episodes, which I have actually watched. So, in a manner of speaking, yes, I actually have watched the new Kevin Chi television series. I have not watched M3 yet. However, that's because this series has not broadcast on Japanese television yet. It has aired on Nico Nico Doga, but I have not gotten around to watching that yet. Otherwise, I'm pretty certain that I've actually watched one episode of every new anime TV series, all roughly 60 of them, that have aired this season. I mentioned some of my opinions last week. Since that week, I've happened to watch the first episode of Fuin Ishigai Shoga. This was a show that I was rather looking forward to. I watched and quite enjoyed all of the Queen's Blade anime. I watched and quite enjoyed all of the Haka Ryogan Samurai Girls television series. I did not watch very much of um, the game was on the tip of my tongue two seconds ago. <laughs> um, the show about the large-breasted ninja girls, I know that's kind of vague, but the game will either come to me, or you folks know what I'm talking about, because it's from Studio Arms, the same studio that animated Queen's Blade. Um, so, Dai Shogun is a show that logically should appeal to me. However, I was startlingly disappointed by the relatively awful production quality of the first episode. I, I was stunned by the very, very limited, very, very stilted, very artificial animation quality. I was a little bit disappointed by some of the off-model character designs. So really, the first episode put me off much more than I anticipated. The show was relatively anticipated before it came out, so I was really quite displeased to find the first episode was such a disappointment. There's a chance that it may improve, but shows very, very rarely ever improve in technical quality rather after their first episode, rather than go the opposite direction. Last night I watched the second episode of Hitsugi no Chaika. The show, I have to admit, has some flawed limitations in its animation quality, but I have to give it tremendous respect for at least trying. There are, There is a long sequence of two characters running, chasing each other, shown from various camera angles in that particular episode, and they're wide and medium camera angles, which is actually quite rare for contemporary anime. The second character running He's a little bit stilted if you watch his leg movements, but the animation quality is still impressive because there are actually very, very few anime that will even attempt realistic running animation these days. There's also a rather elaborate hand-to-hand -hand fight between these two characters, which is actually completely animated with no animation shortcuts. There are some gaps in the animation frame rate that, that careful eye viewers will spot. But once again, the very idea that the anime even attempted to animate this entire elaborately choreographed, choreographed fight scene is pretty impressive by today's animation standards. 
Furthermore, the second episode reveals that Hitchigi Jai no Chaika really is a serious fantasy adventure anime in the vein of shows like Sprout's Princess. We really don't get very many true, serious fantasy sword and sorcery adventure shows like that. Typically, they end up being fantasy comedy. For example, Hataraku Mao-sama. So, the very fact that this is the type of anime that it is makes it relatively unusual, and I have a lot of respect for that. So, this may be one of the shows that I end up following this season. I watched the second episode of Gochi Usa, or Gochi Sosama wa Usogi Deska. I mentioned last week that it was an overabundance of moe. Sometimes I find these shows too soupy or too syrupy. This one I'm actually enjoying quite a bit. I do have to admit a little bit of disappointment, however. The end of the episode ends with Tippy the rabbit encountering a different rabbit at a rival cafe. I thought to myself, this would be absolutely perfect if both rabbits are actually the character's grandfathers trapped in rabbit bodies. Unfortunately, that turns out not to be the case. So I was disappointed, thinking that that's a terrible waste of narrative potential. But otherwise, I quite enjoyed the second episode. I also watched Hunter Hunter, episode 125. And while I'm grateful to finally see just a little bit more of the fight between Netero and the King, I'm really starting to get a little tired of the tedium. The in attack on the King's Palace now in Hunter x Hunter has been going on for many, many weeks, and in broad, significant narrative footsteps, nothing has happened. Dragon Ball Z, for example, gets a lot of criticism for moving at a snail's pace. Hunter x Hunter is like an iceberg compared to Dragon Ball Z lately. Really, I would like to see the storyline pick up the pace a little bit. Just saying. I also watched the second episode of Soul Eater Not, which I'm actually enjoying more than I anticipated to. But, again, a little nitpick. I noticed that the Crunchyroll subtitles, for some mysterious reason, and perhaps this is a licensor stipulation, translate the name of the school, Shibusen, as DWMA. Perhaps that stands for Death Weapon Magic Academy? Perhaps? But I'm not sure how you get DWMA out of Shibusen. So it distracts me every time I read the subtitles and hear the characters say Shibusen and see the subtitles that say DWMA. Bothers me a little bit. Crunchyroll subtitles also bother me when the, first ep when the second episode of No Game, No Life has a character say, I will only play paper. And then he plays rock in Jonkin, which seems to make no sense to me. So, I suspect something may have been translated completely wrong there, but again, my Japanese is not quite good enough to distinguish. But, let me know what you think about Crunchyroll translations on No Game, No Life, and Show It or Not, and the entire new season. I'm always eager to hear what you think, and I appreciate your uh, watching me bring you the animation podcast. So, I'll be back next week. I hope you will be too. Bye-bye.